the word of the Lord today, guys, is watch how you're treating people. Watch how you're treating people of certain classes and of certain occupations. Watch how you're treating people. I believe the Lord has given me this word before. God has given them the grace to be able to do those type of jobs. God has given them the grace and the talent and the gifts and the ability to do certain tasks in this world. And you are frowning down on them. Watch it. I don't know who you are. I know that I've done something like this before. Where would you be without the cooks of this world? Whether you have a hired cook or whether they are cooks that works in your, in your workplace, where would you be? The conveniences and the things that we may enjoy in our lives, going to a restaurant, going through, going to grab something really quick, where would you be without them? Where would you be without the stockers that puts all the groceries nice and neatly in the store? Some of you may say, I don't eat out, so let's still go to the grocery stores. Where would you be without them? Where would you be without those who stocks and put everything in the supermarket so nice and neat for us? You don't see the stockers, do you? Because a lot of times they're working well into the night. They're there to stock. They have to remove all the expired items off the shelves. Where would you be without them? The conveniences of everything being well organized in the supermarket or wherever you may go. Where would you be without these people that are unseen yet they're looked down on? Where would you be without housekeeping who keeps our offices and schools and maintains the grounds that keeps everything so beautiful and clean? Those who picks up your trash, where would you be without them? Would we not have to then not only throw our own trash out, but take our trash to the to the the place where all the trash is 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 discarded, where all the trash is being discarded? Would we not have to go to these places ourselves? What would that be like? Be, be mindful and be grateful for people, no matter what it is that they're doing in their lives. You will look down on a person because you feel they didn't go to college and they don't have an education like you and they are not, they don't have the things that you do. So you think that they're deserving of less treatment. But even that waiter that brings your water to you, be kind. I always wonder how people can be so cruel to people who prepares their food. I wonder how people can be so cruel to a person who is taking care, being a caregiver to a parent or even to themselves. They're cruel and they're unkind to the person that is doing in-home care because of the color of their skin or they think you are nobody well are they a nobody aren't you more of a nobody that you had to hire a supposed nobody to take care of you or is it because there's nobody in your family willing to care for you you see be careful be careful how could you allow, would you be not be more of a nobody if you allow a nobody to prepare your food? You trust a nobody to be in your home, making your beds and preparing your bath? You trust a nobody to undress you and dress you? Would you not be more of a nobody that you had to get a nobody to do such sensitive and do such things where they're seeing your nakedness? They're helping you. Steady your shaky hands. No, this person's not a nobody because you have never had a nobody enter your home. If you're a great somebody, right? Be careful. We are in living in a world and in a society where we look on people and you think, oh, look at that person. You see, don't become like him. Don't become like her. Don't become like them. This is what happened when you don't get an education. This is what you become 
when you start out too late in life. This is what happens when you don't study hard. No. There are people that they have the grace of God. There are kings and and queens and, and sons and daughters of God of God that are just infused in a body on this earth that carries out what others may look at as being mundane and below them. This is what they do in this life and in this world. But when they go back to the Father, they leave that body, they leave the body of the housekeeper, and they rise up a glorified being. They go back to the Father, provided that they are serving the Lord, because we have to do right. We're, we are spiritual beings. So if you take your life and your walk in this earth to be wicked and evil, then your eternity will not be pleasant. But if you live your life to do the things that God has called you to do and to be obedient and to truly understand your purpose, even if you are doing something that the world would consider menial, oh, you're doing what God has told you to do and you're doing it to the best of your ability. And at times he will increase you even by the merit of being faithful over the small things. But you go back to your heavenly father. You left this world as a all you did, you were um, you were a gardener, but who are you truly inside? You see, that is what a lot of people are missing. They're looking at the grace that God has given them to do certain things. And you think it's, oh, this is filthy. But the dirt and the soil of the ground that we walk on all the time, it provides us all the vegetation and the trees and everything we need. This earth, the soil is so important. Yet you don't, you don't pay attention to it. You walk right by it. You dig up bits of it as you need it. You root up flowers out of the ground. You pick things from the tree as you need it and enjoy it. You sit in your hammock that's being held strong by roots that's in the soil. But the soil is so important. So do not look down on people. Be very careful. You think really hard of the things that you enjoy so easily going into a well-stocked and a well-organized store, a tree that someone has trimmed your hedges, someone that blows the leaves off your grass, someone that prepares your food, someone that works on your vehicle and your car, someone who changes your tires, someone who sweeps the sidewalks and cleans your windows. If they were not there, then you would be doing those menial tasks. And guess what? It's be hard for you. It will be tough for you. You realize how important it is, how significant it is. I had a greater appreciation for teachers now that we're doing virtual learning. Not that I disrespected them, but I realize how tough this is. You're at home with your one child or few, and you're getting frustrated and pulling your hair out, right? But then they're dealing with about an average of about 12 to 15 students that that one teacher has to deal with. Do you not have a better appreciation for those who are in education? You may say, oh, being a teacher doesn't make much. They're, uh, I don't want to be a teacher. They don't make a lot of money. But then when you have to be teacher at home, do you not now have a greater appreciation? And you look at your teachers and see these teachers in a, in a better light because they are actually, you realize all that they are doing because of what you're, you may look at certain things and we are like falling apart <laughs> with certain things, right? With your one child, or you, maybe you have two or three. But they're dealing with so many. You realize they have a grace and they have a special grace and touch on them to do these jobs, to educate your children. Appreciate these teachers. Because outside of them being teachers, they have their own personal lives and they have their own te- they have their own students, their own children at home in some cases that they have to help them. So guess what, guys? This message is not just about teachers. It is about being mindful and being careful. This is not just for anyone. This this message anyone can learn from this message. But this is specifically for the children of God. Because believe it or not, a lot of God's children are being very selective in how they treat people, who they want around them, who they think is important to them, 
and even how they deal with people in their workplace and in their restaurants and or places that they go they are very they give people a very hard time you may go to your local coffee shop and you are giving people a hard time you are very you're, you're a stickler and how you want your you know your americano and how you want your stuff to be stop doing that that person is already going through so much they're working so hard some of you you really enjoy going into places and giving people a hard time you find fault in everything everything needs to be just right everything needs to be just perfect but god is saying to stop it there's nothing wrong with having a having an expectation of things to be in order but you're going beyond that you enjoy making people uncomfortable you enjoy watching people scurry and scatter trying to get things right for you the Lord is saying to stop it because the tables can very easily turn around on you. And something that the Lord keeps telling me is that some of you have entertained angels unaware. Okay? Entertaining does not always mean that you're doing right. It means they've watched you and seen what you were doing even when you were doing wrong. Sometimes you've done something to a person that you thought was just this regular poor person and just this homeless person and just this, oh, this is just a housekeeper. You have done some things to people, angels unaware. And it's in my heart again to speak about those of you that you travel and you spend a lot of time on the road and you go to hotels and you go to different places and you may go on your vacations. Stop going into these places and giving these people a hard time. Yes, they need to do their job. Yes, you should have a clean room. Yes, your, your, your food should be great. But God wants you to think beyond just what they should be doing, how they're serving you and realize that they're, they're serving so many other people. And when you deal with the matter and you address it, God wants you to stop trying to get people fired and, and, and you're being very rigid on, and on yielding and apology is not enough. You want a discount. You want to talk to the manager. You want to talk to all these different people and a lot of you you're doing that just so you can get some free upgrades and then a lot of you you do that also simply because you have the power to do it and you enjoy exerting your authority and your power over others and a lot of times it's displacement because there's certain things that you are frustrated about within yourself and so you put this off on other people and a lot of times who is getting the brunt of this are those who are in uh they are in lower positions okay and you think that you can just usurp yourself over them. God is saying to stop doing it. Stop doing it. They are his children. And he's given them the grace and the ability to be able to do the things that's so important. Because without those little things, these, these little things that you think is not important and they're just nobodies. Well, let there not be any mechanics in this world. Let there not be any gardeners in this world. Let there not be anyone any stalkers in this world let there be no one uh any beauticians in this world any uh tailors in this world let there not be housekeeping in your workplace for a week let your trash in that little bin those little things that you don't think about that's always nice and empty let them start building up and let us have to start throwing our own trash out from your house and see what that would be like thank god for those who prepare our foods Let's thank God and pray for those who brings us our mail. Let us thank God for those who are stocking and keeping things well in the supermarket. Let us have our prayers go way beyond that. They do a lot of work and they do a lot of things and they're under a lot of pressure. Pray for them. That's how you see people tossing mail out. It's crazy and it's wrong. But what's going on with that person? This is where you see people that's doing things, being irresponsible with food. Sometimes that that is my pet peeve and I will, I, I'm, I'm not happy to see anything like that. But God wants us to see beyond what's going on in the mind of that person. Some people are just plain plum evil. Yes, but behind the evil, there's a story as well. So I'm not saying that we're supposed to be okay with it by no means because I'm not okay with it. But God wants us to pray for people and we should not be exerting ourselves over anyone, even if we are in a better place in our life.